Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is Josh Likens. I'm the owner of Josh Likens Visuals. And today I'm here with my friend Leah Seaman, and she is the owner of Artabella Gallery. And uh, Leah, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Leah. I am the owner of Artabella Gallery, and I am a professional live event painter. So I fly all over the country going to people's weddings and other events, and I paint live in person in front of an audience and typically complete a fully rendered painting by the end of the evening. It's a lot of fun. I also do commission work. We are actually here in my studio where I complete a lot of my commissions and touch up some live paintings that aren't completed the day of. And it's just an incredible job to have, and I'm so excited and so grateful for the opportunity to get to talk more about the secrets of the live event painting world because it's pretty niche in the wedding world and not a lot of people are familiar with it. So it is an honor and very, very helpful to be able to share some of the frequently asked questions and answer some of those for you today. <laughs> yes, and I'm really glad that we're getting to do this because like you said, I think that not a lot of people are really aware of live painters and like what they do and what goes into booking them. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about today. So let's start off with um, like, how would somebody go about even finding or booking a live painter? Yeah, so there's a few ways that you can do that. The most popular way I've found is TikTok. TikTok has just blown up the live event painting sphere, which is really, really helpful. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and then, you know, Google. So you can go on Google and look up live event painter, live artist, wedding painter. Those um, terms are typically going to pull up local live painters for you. And a lot of times people, because this is such a small field, if you're not satisfied with the work of the live artists in your area, then it is possible for you to maybe put in a hashtag like Georgia Live Painter or California Live Painter, and then that will connect you on the internet, on social media with live painters all over the country. Another great way to find live painters is to follow one and then check out who they're following because it's a very small world. We like to hype each other up, gas each other up, and so you'll see who want like who I am following as Artabella I'm following like 50 different live painters that you could book or you know if you find a live painter that you love submit an inquiry and they're booked for your day ask them for a recommendation I mean I am sending clients out to my peers all the time it's very much so a referral kind of world <laughs> yeah I think that's the case with a lot of folks like yeah. if you aren't able to book the one vendor that you want a lot of times they'll know a bunch of other people that they can recommend to mm -hmm. you so let's talk a little bit more um, about like some frequently asked questions because I'm sure you get a lot yes um, so what are like some of the most common questions that folks have whenever they're um, like reaching out to you one of my favorite questions is how the process, the day of work. So a lot of people assume that live painters will have you pose for five to six hours at a time and we paint you. And so that disrupts the whole day, right? Which is not the case as a live painter. What I do is when your moment happens, so let's say you want your first kiss painted. When the first kiss happens, I am up there with the photographer, the videographer, and I'm taking my own photos typically on my iPhone. So I have an ungodly amount of photos on my phone that I have to delete at some point. Um, but I'll take that reference photo and then take all my stuff and move to the reception. And then I work off of that photo for the rest of the evening. So the clients only have to give me 30 seconds of their time. I take that picture and then I go. And a lot of times I can allow my clients to look at the photo and approve it before I go put it on canvas. So they really make sure that they're comfortable with the pose. They like how they look, all the different things. Another frequently asked question that I get is uh, travel and pricing and sizing. Everything is going to be different based on the artist that you're working with, but typically the travel policy is after a certain distance, um, charging mileage. So like by the mile and then after another distance, it's for a hotel and mileage. And then after another distance, it's hotel mileage or it's hotel flight and rental car. So for me, it's anything up to three hours away is for mileage anything over like between three to five is mileage and hotel and anything over five hours I charge for a flight. Okay. Um, and then as far as like sizing and pricing, you can find a lot of that information on an artist website. I mean, artists are more than happy to talk you through their pricing guides themselves. But if you want all of that broken down, I would highly recommend checking out the artist website because they will have it all laid out for you perfectly. And if they don't, then ask them. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with ever asking. Like if a lot of people won't even have pricing listed on their website, so you have to inquire to get like mm -hmm. their pricing guide, 
um, which, you know, everybody just works differently. So yeah. it never hurts to ask questions. Absolutely. The more questions asked, the better. And then it allows you to get to know the personality of your artist. And that is another big thing that I really encourage people with any wedding vendor, and especially with live painters, is to get to know the temperament of your vendor and get to know the style of your vendor. Because if you're looking for a live painter, there's a lot of different types of live painters out there. There's abstract, there's realism, there's somewhere in between. Get crystal clear on what style really appeals to you. And for my non-artistic folks out there, the way to do that is to look at the art you already gravitate to. What's the art that you have in your home, on your Pinterest boards, in your room? Like the things you've already subconsciously chosen and ask yourself, is this more realistic? Is this more abstract? And that can help you gravitate towards the live painter who's going to best represent your preferred style. And it's not a good thing or a bad thing, whatever style you choose, it's just making sure that the piece that's created at the end of the day makes you really happy. And so for me, I identify as a romanticized realism kind of artist, so it's realistic. My clients look like themselves on my canvas, but the entire piece has a little, little sparkle to it, a little jazz to it. I always add gold highlights to everything at the end of the piece. You know, it's, it's kind of like a extra little bit of realism. A lot of people's work that they have displayed, that's how their work is gonna look. Mm -hmm. So like if you want something completely different than that, it might be best to just go ahead and find a different artist. Yeah. Exactly. Whenever you were talking earlier about, um, like whenever they do the first kiss, <clears throat> that's a lot of times whenever you're up there like with the photographer and the videographer, mm -hmm. do you talk about that with the couple beforehand of like yeah. what moment of the day they want painted? So I offer my clients suggestions, but honestly I can paint anything and a lot of live painters can paint anything. The most frequently requested moments are the first kiss, first dance, or first walk down the aisle. But I have seen just posed portraits, I've seen cake cutting, I have seen father-daughter. Um, the options are really limitless here. And as long as you give the artist a heads up before they go in the wedding day so they know what moment they're looking for, that's all that really matters. And we can paint just about anything. And my favorite part about it all is like working in tandem with the photographer and the videographer. Um, a lot of life painters will do a surprise reveal of the painting instead of, a, so I call it casual reveal and surprise reveal. And casual reveal is where, you know, the clients are checking in on the painting throughout the day and they watch it progress and come to life with the rest of their guests. Surprise reveal, the clients forget I exist. You know, they avoid me like the plague and they just go do their little thing, have a great time. At the end of the evening, I come and get them. We do a little three, two, one countdown. It's very dramatic. I love it. But I'm working in collaboration with the photographers and videographers with that. Um, and I'm honestly working with them the whole day anyways, because I want to make sure they feel fully comfortable filming me, photographing me, if they need me to shift out of the way. I wanna make sure that I am not impeding their work because their work is gonna capture a lot of memories. My work captures one specific memory. And so when the surprise reveal happens, I am making them aware that a surprise reveal is happening so they know to get in position when the moment is about to happen so they can really get the most footage and, and photos of the reaction and all of the big things when it happens. Yeah, and you're always really good about that because we did a wedding together, I think it was 2022. Mm -hmm. um, Chad and Jesse, I can put some of the footage up on the screen here. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you always come over and you're like, hey, like, getting ready to do a reveal if you want to come over and film it. And it's always awesome. It's always so much fun to watch their reaction. Yeah, I really enjoy that. And I've discovered pretty quickly as a vendor, you can't be a lone vendor in a wedding. Like, <laughs> my favorite thing about being a wedding vendor is you kind of in inadvertently enter into a temporary family. Like we all just are collaborating together to focus on our clients. And so the best weddings are the weddings in which the vendors are vibing and working well together and are communicating well, even though I did not, like we didn't know each other before that wedding, but the day of, it's all of a sudden like, hey, we're doing this, I need this, what do you need, blah, blah, blah. And it helps everything go so smoothly. And then it makes sure that our clients leave feeling super loved and like the wedding just goes perfectly. And I really enjoy that because it makes my life easier. I don't feel like I'm alone and just trying to navigate it all on my own. Yeah, and it always is so much fun whenever the, because everybody is really, like you said, kind of like a big team, even though it might be our first time ever meeting each other that day but whenever everybody can really work together, that's why it's so important to kind of vet your vendors beforehand and mm -hmm. kind of find out their personality 
Um, do they work well with other people? Are they nice to hang around with? Because you're around them the whole day. And a great way to figure that out is by checking out their social media. Yeah. So a lot of vendors are going to put videos of themselves on their social media. They're going to introduce themselves. You can read client testimonials, reach out to clients and ask them their experience. It's not a bad thing if you don't vibe with a vendor's personality, but if you want to make sure you have the best wedding day possible, do your due diligence because the last thing you need is the one vendor who you don't click with. And then you're so busy stressing about that, that you're not able to marry the love of your life in full joy and happiness. Yeah. So that's always very important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever you're painting, you mentioned, uh, I think earlier that you will sometimes deliver it like that day. Mm -hmm. Um, are you usually like finishing the painting like that day and they go home with it? Or are you like taking it home and like doing finishing touches and sending it to them? Or how do you usually do it? So before this year, actually, that was my policy was I would really push to get the painting done the day of and leave it with my clients. Cause I think it's super cool to have a piece that is just literally done on your big day and you can take it home. But, um, this year moving forward, I would love to step up my live painting game and I would love to make sure that all of my pieces are getting the love that they deserve, whether in studio or out of studio. So my new policy is that I do my best to complete the painting and typically the painting does look complete by the end of the evening, but then I will bring it um, back to my studio after the wedding. And depending on the package size the client has purchased, they get a certain number of studio hours for their painting. So my largest canvas size, 24 by 36, that gets 20 hours of studio time, I think, 10 or 20. And then my smallest canvas size, 16 by 20 gets five hours. So that just allows me to, outside of the chaos of the guests and the music and all that stuff, I can just really focus on touching up any of the nitty gritty things. My, my favorite part about the painting process is bringing to life the details because the details are really where the magic happens. And so bringing it back to the studio, I found allows me to make sure that all of those details pop, that they all work well together um, and that the clients just really are in love with their painting. And are you usually like framing it too? or what kind of materials are you usually working on? Is it always like canvas or does it just depend on the package? Um, it's always canvas. A lot of live painters also offer guest portraits, live guest portraits on paper. And I'm still toying with whether I'm not going to dive into that realm. So if anyone wants something done, like hit me up, I'd love to try it. Um, but I typically work most frequently with cotton canvas and acrylic paints. So the paints are going to be dry within 30 seconds, which is really nice. Cotton canvas is really lightweight and easy to transport. As far as framing, I typically don't work with framing. I'm not an expert on it and I don't want to lead my clients astray. So my recommendation is always take your canvas to a professional framer. Don't go to Walmart. Don't go to Michael's. Go to a professional framer. This is an investment already in and of itself. So you want to make sure that you're protecting it because this painting, if preserved correctly, could last you five, six generations. And you want to make sure that it's able to travel with you from house to house, from moment to moment. So it can really help you memorialize that big day. So I always send my clients to professional framers. Um, and the canvases also can be free hanging, so they can be unframed. Um, but if you really want to get the most out of it, then yeah, go to the professional framer for that. So prior to the wedding day, what kind of interaction are you usually having with the couple? Are you doing like consultations with them? Are you doing like Zoom calls or phone calls or emails? Or what does that usually look like? So the initial interaction that I have with the client is an inquiry that's submitted through my website or through my social media. And we get all the logistics out of the way, the date of the wedding, the venue, the quote, all the things. And then about a month before the wedding is when I really start to have an interaction with my clients. Um, we schedule a consultation call that can be either Zoom or sometimes I've done FaceTime or phone call at the client's preference. And that is where we really bring to life their vision. Now I'm working with a lot of people who are not typically artistic or in the artist world. So they don't really know what it is. They're not crystal clear on what it is they want. So I've created a list of questions that are really supportive for me in drawing out their vision. Um, asking them things like, uh, is there anything about the venue that you want me to highlight? Are there any specific moments that you want me to pay attention to? What palette do you typically lean towards? Reds, oranges, and yellows, or greens, blues, purples? 
different things like that. And I, my job as a professional artist is to help the non-artistic world engage more in the artistic world. So my, I love my consultation calls because that's really where I get to help people realize like they do have a vision and they do have an idea for their own painting. Um, and that's also a great time for us to get to know each other. Um, sometimes, sometimes clients have used it as a as a complaining session for all the wedding things, which I, I will hold space for because God bless you if you are taking on planning a wedding. I, it's a lot. I, <laughs> you, you have my utmost admiration. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just like a little like, you got this, like keep going, you're almost there. Uh, but I love getting to meet my clients at the consultation call. We really just get to vibe and, and shoot the breeze a little bit before the big day happens. And that's also where I let them know what to expect, like what time I will be arriving, when they'll be seeing me, when they won't be seeing me. That's when we figure out if we're going to do a surprise reveal or a casual reveal, like all those different things. Um, and then the day of, I have their contact info in case something happens or if like I am delayed or something, but I typically don't see the clients again until after they're married. And that's usually just to grab them for another reference photo to congratulate them or at the end of the evening to bring them over to look at their painting for the first time. What does the day typically look like? Whenever you get there, are you getting there like in the morning and getting everything set up or what all are you usually doing? I love this question. So the day of the wedding is pretty chaotic for me. Um, I am arriving between two to three hours prior to the ceremony beginning. And that allows me the time to get set up, get in my spot and get the painting mapped out. There are like four stages in the painting. The first stage is the what in God's green earth is that stage? And so the two to three hours is where I get to get past that stage. So by the time guests see me, we get to stage two, which is, oh, that's a painting. I, I think that's the background. Interesting stage. Um, and so I love getting to that spot when guests arrive where the background is done, but or almost done, but the clients aren't in it yet because then they're all like, what's about to happen? Like, what's going on? Oh my God, that's a painting. Like, what's she doing? Then there's the third stage, which is where I put in the couple. And so when the moment happens, let's say they want the first kiss, I'll take a photo of the moment and then I move over to the reception site. And then for the next five to six hours, I'm working on the portrait of the couple. And I'm also talking with guests, engaging with vendors. I'm letting people help me paint. I'm shooting some footage on my phone myself. I'm just kind of engaging everybody in the process and also bringing to life a pretty realistic portrait at the same time. And then there's the fourth stage, which is the finished piece. And that is typically towards the end of the evening. And I'll grab the couple, the photographer, videographer, if they want. And we do the big reveal. Sometimes guests get to be involved, which is my favorite part. And it's just a wonderful time because the guests have had the chance to watch every almost every single stage and they get invested they get excited about it they get attached to the piece so when it's done it's like this whole victory moment for everybody myself included and we're all just like look at this it was, it was a blank canvas and now it's not ah it's a lot of fun and i'm a very dramatic personality at heart so it fits very well with me um i love <laughs> i love sharing my love of art with people yeah. And this work allows me to engage with the average everyday person and really ignite their inner child and allow them to get excited about the pretty picture. So that's kind of what the full day looks like. And then I'm typically heading home 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, probably get home one or two in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'll usually eat dinner after the painting is done because um, I've discovered that if I stop in the middle of the painting to eat, then I lose all my steam. And yeah, it's just, it is a great time. I, I love wedding days, but they're definitely a blur. Like by the end of the day, I get to my car and I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit in silence for the next hour and a half. <laughs> and that's honestly like insane that you can get all of that done in one day, like in, you know, five, six, seven hours, especially with the amount of detail that you put into it. It's pretty impressive, honestly. <laughs> Took a lot of practice. And I tell people all the time, you, to survive in this industry, you've got to leave your ego in the car. So I am a realism artist by trade. My commission work, if you check out my website, is pretty realistic. And I love perfectionism within my work. But with live painting, I can't do that, which I actually really appreciate. Live painting is boom, 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 instinctive move after instinctive move. I don't have time to overthink. I don't have time to dive too deeply into the detail. I just have to shut off my brain and go and also not care if people are going to see my work when it's not looking its best, which is very healthy for me 
me because I always want to present my best foot forward and the best things. And whenever you have people looking at the piece and it's looking really rough and you know that it's going to look good eventually, like resisting the urge to justify or to hide it or something is really good for my ego. Um, but it took me a lot of practice. I mean, when I first started in this industry, it would take me 10 to 12 hours to get a painting done. And I was dying at the end of the day, like just exhausted. So I was like, nope, can't do that again. So it forces you to just get quicker and quicker and quicker. And I would study other live painters to see what they did to get quicker. So a lot of live painters will use big brushes on their canvas instead of small brushes. So it keeps them from getting stuck in the nitty gritty detail and just different little tricks like that, that help you go from 10 hour days to eight hour days to, I think my quickest painting I ever did was four and a half hours, oh, wow. four, four and a half hours. Yeah. So it's a lot of fun. It's a whole challenge. Yeah. And I love it when I, when I meet people at the beginning of the day, they're all like, oh, I can't wait to see it. And I'm like, listen, me too. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of black out. And then all of a sudden there's a whole painting right in front of me. <laughs> yeah. And that's something different too. Like then, uh, like a photographer or videographer, cause like you said, people are seeing it through every single stage. So they're seeing the part that's really rough and mm -hmm. you're like, what in the world does that look like? Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're not going to see that with me. I'm not going to show you my shot before. Yeah. <laughs> And it makes the whole thing so much more special because then people remember how rough it looked in the beginning and the vendors usually get to see it at the very beginning when it's a blank canvas. So people, it's kind of like the underdog story. Like people watch the character art development of the painting. And then when it's done and it looks good and it looks like them, they're just so much more excited, yeah. which I love. I, I love seeing people light up and get so excited about this. I want to switch gears slightly for this next one. What advice would you give to someone who wanted to become a live wedding painter? Let me get my book out. Okay. Um, <laughs> goodness gracious. What advice would I give someone who wants to be a live painter? I think it would be, mm, do not do this alone. Do not do this alone as a wedding vendor, as an artist, as an entrepreneur. If you approach these fields on your own, you're going to burn out. It's not gonna work, like it's exhausting. Build a community of people who are more invested in your success than you are sometimes. Because I promise you that there are gonna be days, weeks, sometimes months where you just don't wanna do it, you're exhausted, you're burnt out. The wedding world is intense. And it's only when you have those people around you who are cheering you on, hyping you up, I've had friends, <laughs> I've had friends pick up paint for me at Michael's and drop it off at weddings because I forgot my paints at home or something. Mm -hmm. Like have those people in your life who are rooting for you to succeed and who you know will show up for you no matter what. Because it takes a village to raise a kid, it takes a village to raise a business. And my other advice is reach out to other live painters. We are not in competition with each other. And I think that's the case in a lot of the wedding world, especially in the live painting world. There's so few of us that there's not, we're not all fighting for the same customers. There's barely enough of us to go around. So if you want to get into this, reach out to the live painters who you admire the most, or at least follow them and see what they're doing and copy or ask them for their wisdom. They're going to be more than happy to share it with you most likely. And if they're not to heck with them, right? Like go find somebody else. But yeah, my biggest advice would be don't do this alone. Build a community of people around you and ask questions. Always be asking questions and expect things to get chaotic. So like my first year as a wedding vendor, I, <laughs> I had one packing list. And then by the end of the year, I had another packing list. And it was just every wedding. I, I came to expect something to go wrong at every wedding and would get excited when something would go wrong because that was me learning the next thing I needed to pack, like sunscreen. Oh, for the love of God, pack sunscreen. <laughs> and uh, tape and water bottles and just random things that you wouldn't even think. So those are some of the big pieces of advice I would have for live artists, but okay, one more and then I'm done. It's possible to make a living in this field. Like we live in a culture that perpetuates this idea that if you become a creative, become an artist, you're going to starve. You're going to be financially insecure. It's an irresponsible way to live. No, absolutely not. I am, I am making a lot of money painting pretty pictures for a living. 
Like that's it, that's all I do. It is totally possible to be a painter in today's day and age and earn a damn good salary. You have to get creative, you have to get scrappy. You have to have people who are gonna believe in you when you don't believe in you. But trust that it's possible and it will be and it'll happen. And then one day you'll be able to be that person that's like, yeah, I'm an artist, what's it to you? <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and it doesn't happen overnight either. It's not like, you know, you do it for five months and then all of a sudden you're full time. Maybe there are people who have done that, but if, if it takes you longer than you think it should take, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you've, how long have you been doing it for at this point? About three and a half years. Yeah, so, you know, it didn't happen the very first time that you did it. And we all go through a lot of rough stages. We all go through work that just is really bad. Mm -hmm. um, but the more you keep working on it and the more people that you meet, the more weddings that you do, the more times that you do it, you're gonna get better. Mm -hmm. And it is possible to, you know, I'm doing this full time now too. This is my second year doing it full time. Mm -hmm. So it is possible to, if you stick with it and if you, you know, get your foot in the right doors, eventually the right doors will start opening for you. Yeah. And especially if you make connections in the wedding world. So a lot of the wedding world is just referrals. Build good relationships with the vendors because they're going to be the ones that refer their clients to you. I mean, as a live painter, I'm typically one of the last vendors booked. And so it's hard for me to like send out too many recommendations because my clients typically have everyone booked, but I'm sharing other vendors' work. I'm reposting, I'm tagging, I'm shouting out and things, and they're doing the same for me. It's, we basically just all uplift each other together, and if one of us is struggling, the rest of us is struggling, honestly. So like, don't be afraid to raise your prices, don't be afraid to be expensive, to be fighting more for the vendor sometimes because that's the community that you're working in and that's the community that's gonna help you create the best experience for the client. Well, Leah, thank you so much for being on the show. I think that this has been a lot of fun. I hope that you guys got some uh, helpful information out of this. I know we covered a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so Leah, where can people find you? People can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Artabella Gallery and online at artabellagallery.com. And if you have any questions or just want to chat, and if you're a live painter yourself looking for some tips or tricks, please don't hesitate to reach out. I just wanna make sure that the world has more art, even if it is not for me. So please get in touch, I'd love to work with you. And thank you so much for having me. This was such a pleasure. I love talking about my work, so this just made my day. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for watching. See ya.